And we are hearing the, the devastation there and a lot of the trucks that were meant to be going into Gaza have not been going in and we're hearing all sorts of stories of perhaps reasons why perhaps Hamas is taking them over. Uh, regardless of why, the reason at the moment, or the situation I should say at the moment, is the lack of supply and medical equipment, food and the like. What is um, Save the Children doing specifically in that situation? No, absolutely. And as I mentioned, denial of humanitarian assistance is a grave violation against children's rights. So let me be very clear about that. What we have been able to do is uh, at the beginning of this, uh, this war to find some suppliers still in Gaza itself um, that were sitting on, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 this was a city, right? So, so there were stocks uh, available. So our incredible supply team managed to find some of those stocks. We bought them up, um, helped distribute them to the most vulnerable in, in Gaza. So this is water, food supplies, but it is tiny. So what we were able to do was around three, uh, basically supporting about 3,000 people. You know, out of millions uh, of people in need, that's obviously a drop in the ocean. We have trucks at the border in um, in Egypt waiting to go in. Um, as you well know, uh, the trucks are, are dripping in, um, are mostly stopped. Um, so we are as prepared as we can be uh, to scale up and to support as many people uh, in need. Um, but at the moment, we simply do not have access uh, to the people in need. Um, and so what we need is unhindered humanitarian access. We need a humanitarian corridor. But most of all, what we really, really need is the fighting to stop. We need a ceasefire. And we're also hearing people suffering in Israel, a total of around 1,400 fatalities. And uh, again, some of those children, we just spoke to a resident in Tel Aviv who has a number of children and they are um, seeing psychologists who have been brought into the school. They're learning about not to hate. They are being told that perhaps it's um, they're just wanting land and, and not going too much into what is happening. But again, just looking at the immediacy of what is needed, supplies and to keep people alive, but there's that ongoing um, need for, you know, psychological treatment and mental health, and this is going to potentially go on for, for their life. No, absolutely. The, I mean, at the moment, of course, we're really, really worried about the survival of children, um, but the ongoing psychosocial um, trauma that children uh, are facing uh, Palestinian children and Israeli children, and also, um, you know, children outside of um, of the immediate vicinity of Israel and Gaza. There are people in uh, all over the world um, that are that are currently facing um, discrimination based on, on on their background, and that is not okay. A child is a child, wherever in the world they live, and they have rights wherever in the world they live. And the psychosocial trauma that these children are facing is going to be a lifetime scar. And can you tell us, please, what the latest is on the ceasefire now petition that has been signed by around 60 countries and hundreds of organisations? Yeah, we're very proud that more than 600 organisations globally have signed up uh, on this. And this is really, really global. Organisations from all over the world have signed up on, uh, on this petition. And uh, we also now have um, uh, gone above 500,000, so half a million people have signed up, um, of which... 10% in the last few hours. So that just shows you that this intensification of the bombardment that we've seen since last night is spurring people into action. People want to see peace. Save the Children Humanitarian Director Gabriella Wyman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And if you would like to donate to Save the Children's Gaza Emergency Appeal, you can go to their website at savethechildren.org.au.